Man, it's been almost a month ago since we've last played Sonic Frontiers, but now we've actually concluded not only Kirby's Return of Dreamlands Deluxe, just to get that out of the way, but also say applies with Donkey Kong Country for the Game Boy Advance version as well. So I'm finally back for more playing the forms of Sonic Frontiers. Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Sonic the Hedgehog here, aka the Blue Blur, aka Blue Justice, and I am from the likes of the Mexi Toys videos once again. Jeez, it's been a very long while since I actually bring up this catchphrase. And welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Sonic Frontiers for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, PC Steam, and finally the Nintendo Switch. So, if I can recall correctly, is that last time we did somehow manage to able to almost wrap things up everything for the likes of the forms of the fifth and final island, aside from the fact that we were originally we're going to be able to actually get the sixth Chaos Emerald in that particular island, but then again, no, we'll save that until in a later portion throughout the majority of this playthrough. And because of this, though, no, today for this video, as you can tell, we're about to be able to go back into Kronos Island for, presumably, for the final time. And because of that, we're about to take on the Action Chain Challenges, as you can tell. Because obviously, since I've almost barely close to able to actually fully completed everything in Kronos Island, and we can probably do the same thing for the other three islands coming up, although so let me tell you something right, right from the start though, is that technically that we've already did manage to able to achieve one of those S ranks in Junior Falls the Action Chain Challenges, which is this one right here, which actually, which actually signifies the forms of the color yellow as you can tell. But um, I'm actually going to be go ahead and try to able to do the first uh, action chain challenge again. Except this time I'm about to be able to aim for the S ranks department. So either way though, that's the main focus of this particular video. And as far as tomorrow is concerned, well, aside from the fact that we can able to actually go back into... Uh, Iris Island once again, except the fact that not only we can able to actually do the action chain challenges for later, but also we can able to actually collect some more of those memory tokens uh, later down the road, and maybe potentially try to battle some more enemies here and there, just to able to get that out of the way. And rest assured about the fact that we can also manage to able to actually just to almost guarantee that uh, I don't think it's possible for this particular weekend, but definitely in the next couple of weeks or so, we can definitely able to actually wrap things up everything for the big fishing stuff. So, now as you can tell about the fact that we once again managed to able to change into a different outfit this time around though, I'm sure it's still based off from the likes of the Monster Hunter games basically, but I'm not exactly sure what this costume is called though, because then again though, as I said before, it's been almost a month ago since we've last played this game. Sure enough though about the fact that not only did we somehow manage to able to wrap things up everything for not only Donkey Kong Country for the Game Boy Advance, but also with how the fact that recently, to be honest, she finally recently finished up with the forms of Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe. And exponentially speaking, I was about the fact that I believe that, uh, you know, as far as what Ray has already explained about this ever since in yesterday's video for the finale portion of Donkey Kong Country for the Game Boy Advance version, that he will eventually will be back onto the forms of Super Mario RPG at some point in during the forms of in um, on Monday. Specifically Monday the 4th all the way up to the 8th of September. Just in case about the fact that he will be able to actually guarantee for saying this. He might be able to actually wrap things up everything in Super Mario RPG as well. So relatively speaking though, once those particular Let's Plays has been over, well to be more specifically Super Mario RPG, I think, I guess as far as I'm concerned, we've only got about current two, two current Let's Plays as far as this is concerned we are still working on. Although, speaking of progression and stuff like that, that obviously I'm still going to be playing through Sonic Frontiers for now on. And on top of that, Silver still needs to be able to prepare to be able to get into the hardest challenge in terms of the forms of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania during this particular process as far as this is concerned. So even then though, I'm sure about the fact that we're able to find out some more details about that particular moment's notice and join at some point in a midway portion of September. Because as far as I can tell, 
that's um as far as I can usually can tell for this point. That's uh, I apologize for my commentary is a little bit slightly awkward at this point again. But that's just because about the fact that it's no staple to actually just to go back into Sonic Frontiers once again. Especially it's a perfect timing too, because after the events of that particular announcement for the likes of the forms of the third and the final uh, free DLC update, which is of course the final horizons, and let me tell you, I'm pretty excited for it, especially concerning about the particular point that uh, around that time is about to be releasing, or once that particular free DLC update will be existent, uh, for the time being, I'm most likely going to most likely going to be focusing on not only battling some more guardians but also with the forms of battle some more enemies for time to time and exponentially we could also manage to able to focus on you know every single uh, action chain challenges so and from here I can assure to you once we able to actually got every single S ranks and journey forms within every single action action chain challenges I think there was actually a special reward if you do manage to able to achieve uh, the S ranks in every single action chain challenges as far as I'm concerned. Although, mind you, relatively speaking, I was about the fact that, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is the reason why it took so long to able to actually get back into this particular uploading schedules for the sake of the forms of Sonic Frontiers as a result. Not only because the forms of certain Let's Plays needs to be finished, but also it will took me a couple of attempts to able to actually achieve the S ranks in journey forms of the action chain challenges, which at this point in time, uh, for the sake of Sonic Frontiers for now on, I think it will be most likely going to be uploaded on weekends for now. Well, it wasn't until when it gets to point until on the halfway point in September, things will change a little bit. So because of that though, yeah, I will admit that right to wait though, I apologize for that particular long awaited uh, series for these uploading schedules alike. Well, let me tell you something, because of how in fact this kind of feels a bit of a similar situation, as in, uh, let's just take a look back on the forms of 2018 and 2019, for example. That, generally speaking, though, we did somehow manage to able to do our playthrough of, uh, Super Mario Odyssey back in during the forms of 2018, all the way up to 2019, presumably speaking. Now, as a result, we did manage to did done the first half of the forms of 2018 for certain parts of Super Mario Odyssey, but then we did somehow manage to focus on the second half of the playthrough in 2019. So, because of that, though, I don't think it's necessarily a plan here for this year, this time around, though, because obviously about the fact that, although it might be kind of unfortunate about the fact that I'm not exactly sure of how long does the actual free uh, DLC update coming up, specifically the Final Horizons of how length it was. So I think I'm also able to actually find out for myself, or someone will say in the comment session down below, just to ensure about the fact that they've tried to able to mention something like as a recap of how long that particular, or as far as the forms of the game's length, or Relatively speaking, the Final Horizon's length will be revealed to be. Although, mind you, they only shown us a teaser at first, but then eventually in the next couple of uh, days or so, they'll show us some more footage of the forms of the Final Horizons during that specific time. So, yeah, I'm still very excited for it. So, anyway though, um, as I mentioned this before, it's about the fact that today's day is of course the, uh, the 2nd of September today, in some cases in 2023 today. Um, I can't believe by saying this, although I'm also able to say this for this point right now, it's been almost 10 years ago since when My Little Pony Friendship is Magic UK's DVD release has been first existence during the forms of in, I would say in September 2013, yeah, better late than ever I suppose when it comes to that particular DVD release during that period, and this actually is one of the first ever My Little Pony Friendship is Magic DVDs that we've ever got, back in Journey Forms of in 2013, because we were originally trying to able to actually get one of those DVDs, uh, based off from the likes of the Forms of the Australian versions, but, of course, about the fact that we have to stick around with the Forms of Region Locks, so as a result, it will be kind of unfortunate if we do manage to come across into Region Lock stuff. Assuming, of course, of course if we do manage to able to purchase ourselves the multi-region DVD player, but it might be a bit too late for now, because obviously, Thank goodness that we've now finally got those DVD uh, releases for, you know, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Well, almost every single season, except with uh, 
you know, Season 8 and 9, because obviously we still haven't got the actual official releases for not only Season 8, but also with Season 9 as well. So that will almost complete the entire, well, saga of any sort. I mean, that would be incredible, but unfortunately, though, that does not seem the case, sadly, so... But anywho, though... So yeah, a few things I want to explain while this is going on. And that's what appears to be about the fact that you already know about the fact that in the past few days or uh, past few days ago, sorry for a little bit of a ton twist in the end, folks, because obviously again, I'm glad to able to actually be continuing playing through Sonic Frontiers after so many uh, weeks ago. But even then, no beggars else can't be choosers, I guess. So. Anywho though, and also, if you couldn't tell already, since we're going to be participating in the Action Chain Challenges, as you can see, basically we got ourselves a timer based off from how many combos you perform. Something very similar to the forms of how it does it, excuse me, similar to the forms of how it does it on this particular dreaded uh, Pinball Machine Challenge, where basically though you kind of do the same thing, except you do have about a minute to do so, and then once you build up some more points for your combos, Basically, though, you would able to actually guarantee to able to get some more points, which obviously you can able to obtain certain points based off of the likes of not only uh, performing certain tricks and also just grinding on some rails and boosting and let's not forget ourselves beating up some more enemies, including certain guardians here and there. Because if you somehow managed to able to reach for about times 256, the more points you're able to get during that specific combo streak. So... But, however though, if the time runs out for that particular gauge, uh, your combos will be reset. So, even then, it's good out able to keep on doing all sorts of actions here and there, including obtaining some of those weird low, uh, yellow glowy orb thingies, as we're about to be keep on collecting. But, even then, though, because sometimes though, I will admit though right away, getting the S ranks is quite of a challenge, especially noticeable, because relatively speaking, though, you have to master the forms of certain uh, move sets you got able to put up with. So I will admit though right away though, because at this point in time, that this is where the point about the fact that we have to do multiple, I mean a lot of, uh, well, uploading schedules for, for now on, for the sake of the forms of Sonic Frontiers, at least for now, until uh, the forms of that particular point that uh, the third and final free DLC update will be releasing during that time. So, yeah, it might take a bit of a while to able to actually just try to get this process going, so... Anyway, though, uh, you probably already know about the fact that recently that Excitebike 64 is now available on the NSO Expansion Pack. Now, that's as far as I found out something, as far as not only for its N64 games lineup, but also with the Game Boy Advance selection stuff you know as well. It seems that we've only got five games left, uh, combined during the forms of the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack games, as far as I'm concerned. Well, we've only got two games left for the N64 lineup, and we've only got three Game Boy Advance games left, which there are 1080 Snowboarding, Mario Party 3, F-Zero Maximum Velocity, Golden Sun, and finally, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Maybe they'll try to able to add in more games in the future. Maybe they'll try to able to mention that during the course of the next Nintendo Direct if that comes out. So even then, though, I suppose time will tell, especially concerning about the particular point that we've almost nearly at the end road for the likes of the forms of certain games will be uh, releasing on the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack and stuff like that. So. So speaking of which though, I'm not exactly sure what's the next game they'll add it in for the sake of the forms of the NSO expansion pack. For the sake of the forms of this month though, my guess it will be a Game Boy Advance game. It could be either be Golden Sun or uh, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror or F-Zero Maximum Velocity, or perhaps even maybe something else for that matter, because I'm sure I did say this before, that maybe they'll add it in 1080 snowboarding in June at the end of the year, because considering this is a winter game and stuff like that, and as far as Mario Party 3 is concerned, my guess it will be in November this year, just like how they did for the likes of both Mario Party 1 and Mario Party 2, from last year, from last November in some cases though, 
But then again, though, it's difficult to tell, especially noticeable, because we're still at the beginning portion of the Forms of September already. In addition to that, I believe we've only got about 20 days to go until the physical version of Pikmin 1 Plus 2 for the Nintendo Switch will be releasing during that time. So even then, though, I'm curious to know what the actual, uh, uh, the cartridge itself looks like, and especially noticeable with the back description for it. But I'm sure our will wait until likely or so for 20 days time. So even then though. Oh yeah, let's talk about the forms of some other good news I would like to point things out. Is that recently, that um, it looks like that the Nintendo Switch, at least specifically in the USA sales, is that the Switch has recently beat the Nintendo Wii in sales for the likes of the USA. So because of this though, yeah, it's actually uh, pretty cool, all things considered. No surprise about the fact that the Switch is doing super duper well. Especially noticeable, gee, no wonder why they offer us, not only for the sake of the forms of certain uh, uh, price cuts for certain digital stuff, and exponentially speaking, I was about the fact that it's a pretty good uh, way to able to know how successful the Nintendo Switch went. And just to keep up them the uh, the momentum going for the sake of the forms of the actual sales department. So, anywho though, uh, let's talk about the forms of the most important aspect about the forms of today's topic while this is going on. That's what appears to be about the fact that remember how uh, Ray the Flying Squirrel has already mentioned about the fact that brief moment that recently we got ourselves our uh, yet another Nintendo Direct, but except this time we're going to be focusing on Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and because of that, let me tell you, it was really amazing as far as that raid the Flying Squirrel has already mentioned about. Although sure, it still looks pretty weird, able to know that game is going to be releasing around the same week as the forms of Sonic Superstars, because it looks like it's going to be a 90s competition all over again, except in the forms of the modern hardware, so... Everything else will be come to expect at this point, so... Anywho though, so yeah, um, in terms of what I've found out, for the sake of the forms of some more information about the forms of, uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, not only does it show us some, uh, uh, a brief story cutscene, that thankfully Princess Peach is no longer a damsel in distress, so that's why she becomes a playable character. And on top of that, speaking of character selections though, in terms of Super Mario Bros. Wanda, it looks like we're able to actually get ourselves not only Blue Toad, but also Toadette, and strangely enough, Nabbit was in the game. And, conveniently enough though, since about the fact that we're actually getting ourselves the ginormous amount of characters that we can able to select for the very first time in a 2D Mario game. So as a result, not only do we get Mario, but also Luigi, Princess Peach, Princess Daisy, Blue Toad, Yellow Toad, Toadette, Yoshi, Yellow Yoshi, Red Yoshi, as far as I'm concerned, and Light Blue Yoshi, and finally, Nabbit, making a grand total of 12 playable characters in a 2D Mario game for the very first time. So yeah, that's pretty insane if you ask me. Especially concerning about the fact that after the events of Super Mario Run on the mo uh, mobile phones and stuff like that, well, exponentially though, that game does have a grand total of 11 playable characters. So, relatively speaking though, about the fact that they only, uh, uh, got like one singular toad to play as, which is of course the normal color scheme of toad. Now on top of that, they do manage to include uh, the fifth playable Yoshi, which is of course the purple Yoshi. But as a result of that particular matter though, I think something tells me the reason why about the fact that Blue Toad and Yellow Toad are the returning playable characters since a new Super Mario Bros. U and all that stuff. I think it's because, for what I've noticed on the actual overview trailer, at the very end anyway, they did somehow manage to able to give us a little sneak peek of what's to come, especially they shown us a brief footage that, yes, Captain Toad does make an appearance in a 2D Mario game, which as a result, it does feel pretty interesting all things considered, especially because, well gee, no wonder why that Toadette is actually going to get a lot popular these days when it comes to playable debut. Well, at least specifically on the Nintendo Switch platform these days. Well, the only exception being is of course not only Super Mario Party, but also with uh, Mario Party Superstars and also Mario Strikers Battle League Football. But anything else though, that seriously, Toadette can seriously able to actually become the star of the show. 
when it comes to becoming, you know, a playable character to Pac-Man. So, like usually, relatively speaking, as you becomes playable and, you know, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, and also Super Mario Maker 2, and also with the forms of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Mario Tennis Aces, and also Mario Golf Super Rush, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, and uh, all the other etc. stuff here and there. And now we're able to actually play as her in the forms of Super Mario Bros. Wanda. I mean, let's just hope about the fact that I don't think they're able to actually bring a Super Crown this time around, though, because, obviously, back in New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, that it's so weird with the Super Crown as a power-up that is only exclusive to Toadette, especially that she becomes Peachette, which it does brings us to a lot of memes of uh, Bowserette, or just anything else in general. So, but either way, though, I'm guessing there must have been some consumption, so... Oh, and speaking of power-ups, though, and that uh, we do finally manage to able to figure out what this uh, specific uh, elephant-looking uh, power-up looks like, well, not only about the fact that, although some people got a little bit upset about the fact that, that they kind of wish that they were able to actually bring in some more animal variety, but as it turns out that the elephant uh, transformation might be the only one as of now, especially concerning about the fact that, well, not only we finally managed to able to learn more about the forms of the elephant transformation for not only for Mario, but also Luigi can turn into an elephant and say so applies with Peach, Daisy, and as well as the forms of Yellow Toad, Blue Toad, and even Toadette as well. Where it's I'll admit though, right away though, it does kind of remind me like a creepy uh, uh, pastor for the sake of the forms of like uh, the pink elephants on parade. Uh, kind of vibes to it though, specifically for Peach anyway though. But either way though, I'll admit though, right away, they do look pretty cool though. Well, the only characters they do not transform into something, which there are. Yoshi and Nabish, although I'll explain more details about that particular topic once we're able to keep on doing the forms of some more action chains here and there, despite the fact that I got to constantly have to reset the actual process as you can tell. So, because again, sometimes getting S ranks on action chain challenges can be tremendously difficult to achieve, so unless if you really want to go for a true 100% completion, well good luck for that. So, anyway though, um, yeah, we do found out about the fact that what the name of the power-up, or the actual power-up item is, as far as you will call it. I think it's gonna call, it's gonna call it, uh, Fruit Elephant, so, or Elephant Fruit, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, that's actually pretty swell. And every now and then, that, uh, every other characters do say, uh, well, let's just say there's actually a line they do now obviously say, and that's what appears to be by the forms of Wowie Zowie. So, yeah, kind of an interesting, uh, a line for the likes of any other characters in the game, so even though no, that might be uh, something, I guess. So, anyway, now in terms of the forms of another topic they somehow mentioned about something, they did obviously reveal not only some more information about the forms of the elephant transformation, but also they bring us two new power ups, which there are the bubble and drill, which, to be more specifically, we're able to actually stumble across into ourselves two new items that was actually introduced for the likes of the forms of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and those are a uh, bubble flower and a uh, drill mushroom. And I'm gonna say, they do look pretty cool though. Although, mind you about the fact that technically we've already seen a bubble technique since in, uh, well, let's just say a new Super Mario Bros. U, for instance, that if you do manage to be able to hold, uh, blue baby Yoshi in that game, and you can able to actually summon some tons of bubbles here and there. So, at least potentially with all the other characters like Mario, Luigi, and the rest of the gang, obviously they can now able to actually utilize the bubble technique. So, even then though, yeah, it does look pretty cool though. And as far as the drill mushroom, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they obviously did manage to able to, well, it kind of reminds me of the forms of the spin drill for a little bit, from the likes of Super Mario Galaxy 2, except the fact that you obviously could have to obtain a power-up, which is, of course, the drill mushroom, as you probably already expect. And also, they've shown us some more details about the forms of, uh, of, a uh, specific character, uh, tribute or something like that. Like, for instance, when it comes to the forms of seven playable characters, mainly the forms of Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Yellow Toad, Blue Toad, and Toadette, are 
you know, they all played identically to each other. So no uh, special movesets or anything else like that, unlike Super Mario 3D World, so... Oh well, no big deal. Now, as far as the forms of multicolored Yoshis, as far as I'm concerned, including that bit, um, it might be a little bit somewhat of a disappointment for most Yoshi fans out there, is that apparently though, when it comes to not only for multicolored Yoshis, but also with the forms of Nabbit as well, they're all basically the easy mode characters. Wonder want to know why, if that might be seems the case? Well, for instance, about the fact that they showed us a brief description during the forms of the bottom right corner of the actual character selection screen, that if you do manage to able to select uh, Yoshi or any other Yoshis for that matter, including Nabbit as well, basically though, if you get hit by certain enemies, you don't get hurt. So basically, it just knocks you back a little. Although, relatively speaking though, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they do not transform into any other forms for that matter. So, I guess it's understandable, because obviously that'll make the actual elephant Yoshi somewhat of a cursed image. And on top of that, that could be also applied for Nabbit as well. But, on the other hand, when it comes to all 12 characters combined, they can still able to obtain the Wonder Flower to able to make these weird specific effects. So... Even that note, that might be saying something, so... And also, they mentioned about the forms of how the multiplayer is going to play out to be, not only for its local play, but also online play is actually be the case. Which, I felt a little bit mixed on it, although, on the other hand, though, it's nice to see online play in action for the sake of the forms of a brand new 2D Mario game. But I'm a little bit mixed on it though at the same time. It's oh, it's most notably because I was a little bit worried about the fact that they might able to go for the exactly the same issue as the forms of Super Mario Maker 2. You know what I mean about the fact that the online will sometimes lag, which it might not be pleasant to look at. So even then though, I'm sure we'll find out some more details about that particular point worth noting for once that game finally comes out until on the 20th of October. So even then though, at least the release date is pretty much unchanged. So, and on top of all that stuff though, for what I've heard, they were able to actually bring seven uh, worlds as far as I'm aware, which is a bit lesser compared to the forms of how it does it on uh, not only New Super Mario Bros. U, but also with New Super Luigi U as well. But honestly, I'm perfectly fine with that, because I think it might actually contain some gem pack full of levels, concerning about the fact they are able to bring not only uh, the level selection uh, department, but also they were able to actually bring in some open areas. So that seems kind of like an interesting combination for not only for New Super Mario Bros. U, but also with the forms of Super Mario 3D World as well. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. So, and as you can see, we've now finally managed able to obtain their 100% completion completely in terms of the forms of Kronos Island. So, relatively speaking, we've done everything on that particular island. So now we can able to go back into Iris Island to able to do pretty much the same thing, except the fact that there's going to be a gem pack full of memory tokens we need to obtain. And my god, it might be for so much of a busy work. So... And don't even get me started in any forms of being Chaos Island coming up. I mean, you may see nothing yet, so... But anywho though, um... I suppose another thing I should probably explain about the forms of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, actually. And that's what appears to be about the fact that, well, as far as I can tell, not only does it able to bring ourselves the forms of, well, some new features here and there, including by the forms of, well... How should I put it? I think that's as far as I can say about it. But also about the fact that they obviously gonna bring us into yet another Nintendo Switch OLED model. Which as a result, about the fact that I think I should probably save that particular mentioning for last. Although, what's even odd is that for whatever reason, they will not include the Amiibo functionality. My guess is about the fact that the, uh, the Amiibo functionality will almost start to phase out for the sake of time, especially concerning that the last time we actually got the Amiibo functionality when it comes to certain Nintendo Switch games, as far as I'm aware, not only for its uh, Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe, but also with The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as well. So, relatively speaking though, I felt it was a little bit odd that not only does Pikmin 4 lack the forms of the Amiibo functionality, but also now, with Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which I think that could be also applies for WarriorWare Move It. Maybe, I have no idea. Or maybe potentially with Super Mario uh, um, RPG here and there. 
But then again, I'll have to wait and find out in the next couple of weeks or so. Especially concerning about that particular point that, uh... Obviously, about the fact that they've shown us some uh, gameplay previews of uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And let me tell you, it looks so amazing so far. Especially, I'm super excited about that still. And in fact, that not long now until that particular game finally comes out. So, even then, though, that be gives us a lot of high expectations. Especially, noticeable, it'll just bring us something new rather than just rehashing the exactly the same aspects as in every single new Super Mario Bros. games these days, so... But either way, um... Oh yeah, let's talk about the forms of the new model they'll bring out for the sake of the forms of, or should I say, a new edition for the likes of the Nintendo Switch OLED model of systems. Uh, somehow, um, as soon as that particular Direct ended, obviously they announced there's gonna be a new color variation of that particular Nintendo Switch OLED model system. And this time, what appears to be the Red Mario Edition. So, yeah, see? Uh, that's how the forms of, uh, well, the actual, uh, the Red Mario Edition of the OLED model should have been. Uh, at least back in Journey forms have been, uh, sometime in spring, or specifically in April. But I'm guessing they just bring out Bear Late the Never kind of routine or something like that. So, even then, uh, what I found that particular Switch OLED model of, uh, the red one to be a little bit more interesting is that not only does it show us a familiar Nintendo Switch logo in the center, but also in the back, not only does it show us a silhouette of Mario, but if you open something in the back, you know, it shows us the forms of HDMI cables and stuff like that. It does show us some plentiful of coins in the back. So yeah, that's actually pretty interesting for that particular dog. So, and usually relatively speaking, though, for what I've looked at it on the actual imagery and stuff like that, it feels really, really similar to the forms of how it does it on uh, the previous version of the Nintendo Switch Red model, or anything else to be more specific, from the likes of back in 2021, for instance. So, even then, though, that I'm not exactly sure if I was trying to able to get that particular version, to be honest with you, because I'm still happy with the forms of my standard on Nintendo Switch as of now, so even then, no, no issues from there, especially noticeable every once in a while with my protective screen does seem to have some bit of scratches every once in a while, but regards to such though, I just honestly don't care, so even then, no, yeah, um, yeah, pretty incredible Nintendo Direct, I might add, for the likes of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and I'm still very excited about that particular game. It's kind of a shame about the fact that it's kind of unfortunate we can't do that particular Let's Play until specifically next year in 2024, if that seems to be the case. So, even then, though, I'm actually pretty excited for that. So, yeah, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Are you guys excited for the forms of Super Mario Bros. Wonder after bringing us some more information about the game? Because I surely, I am. Especially noticeable, I can finally play the game on a go. And on top of that, just to see what's the, uh new level concepts they're able to bring us something into, and maybe some tons of surprises here and there. So even then, no, yeah, I'm very excited about that still. Although, no surprise about the fact that Bowser is once again the main antagonist. So I really, I really wish if they were able to actually bring a different villain, but oh well, Pegasus cells can be choosers, like I said before. So either way, uh, the next thing I want to mention though, is that speaking of October, that basically, we actually got ourselves a new confirmation about the forms of Front Mission Second Remake does indeed manage to be able to bring a new release date for that particular game, and that's going to be releasing until in October. So, now I think it's about to do out in the forms of the 5th of October, as far as I'm concerned. That was on Thursday, presumably speaking. So, because originally though, that game was supposed to be able to be releasing during the summer, but of course that particular thing has been delayed. So, even then though, at the very least we actually got ourselves a new release date for Front Mission, um second remake and all that stuff so even then though that it seems we're about to gain ourselves a lot of titles for the likes of october for the sake of the forms of nintendo switch front so yeah pretty interesting oh and another thing too is about the fact that um when it comes to like uh new color variations for certain systems is about to be releasing uh for what i've noticed is about the fact that there's this new variant for the likes of the forms of you know the game boy uh, console, you know, with the forms of the pocket ambulark or anything else to be more specific. It looks like about the fact that not only do we able to get ourselves the glow in the dark 
uh, analog pocket, but also, strangely enough, a Game Boy, which I've got no words to say. Although, it is pretty interesting, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if I can probably necessarily try to able to get it anytime soon. Although, I will say though, it does look pretty interesting still, so even then, yeah, that's what I can really think about it. And uh, there's also another thing I should probably bring this out as well, is that recently we actually going to be able to notice there's going to be a new tour coming up for Mario Kart Tour, and as it turns out, we're going back into Sky High Sunday, as far as what Raid the Flying Squirrel has briefly already mentioned about that ever since in Donkey Kong Country GBA version, or the Game Boy Advance version as far as I like to call it, and um, as a result, I think what I've noticed is that uh, for the actual tour's name, it's going to be Sunday Tour, which, not to be confused, as the exactly the same tour's name as the films of last year. So, and I think something tells me, I believe that particular tour is going to be most likely focusing on uh, winter-themed tracks or something like that for some reason, which not only does it able to bring back uh, Sky High Sunday, but for what I've noticed, they're also going to be bringing themselves into uh, the new uh, Remix track, which as a result, it's going to be Remix Vanilla Lake 2. And let me tell you, it does look pretty interesting, especially not only does it able to include some more structure, but also they managed able to include the Inglos they can able to drive into. So yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. I'm definitely looking forward and curious to able to check out uh, Remix uh, Vanilla Lake 2, once that particular tour is going to be up on live, so, but as expecting it will be up and doing at some point until on Wednesday, so, yeah, and also, for I've heard anyway, they obviously brings us into a yet another golden variation of that specific character, and it looks like about the fact that it looks like we're about to be getting the golden regular variant, so, yeah, it might look a bit odd in some scenarios, but hey, at least that's quite a sight to behold, I guess. So, in addition to that, about the fact no matter what though, speaking of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, they did briefly mention about the forms of that specific fact, uh, when it comes to the forms of the talking flowers, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, basically, not only do you do have the option you can able to actually turn off, the talking flowers, but also is that you can able to choose whatever language they speak in. So yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. You can able to actually choose from either um, France, Spanish, or uh, Japanese, or Italian, or uh, Korean, etc, etc. Possibilities were endless, I'm telling you. So yeah, I'm very curious to know about the fact that if I set it into Japanese, that will be kind of interesting. So. Okay, let's talk about the forms of the next uh, Mii Racing series They obviously brings us something into for Mario Kart Tour for the next tour coming up, which is of course Sunday Tour, which as a result, I think it's going to be a yet another color variation of the standard Mii Racing suit, and it's going to be the light blue color, which I think we predicted that correctly uh, ever since when they first teasered. Uh, journey forms of Wave 40 for those me racing suits, all things considered. And as far as I'm aware, the special item they brings us into, and that's of course the Ice Flower, to make it a little bit more of a color coordinates or something like that. So, makes sense to able to actually have the Ice Flower as an item for that particular me racing suit in mind. So, yeah, I guess it's that. And supposedly enough, when it comes to the forms of the 41st, uh, me racing suit when it comes to that particular lineup. Oh gee, it, it might be hard to speculate at the moment because I can definitely tell they're now on the, uh, the different shape with that particular upcoming tour for the next two weeks or so. But even then, no, I suppose we'll save that particular topic and during a later time. So even then, no, nothing uh, to gripe about or anything else like that. So. And also, what I've noticed as well is about the fact that Borderlands 3 is about to be coming on the Nintendo Switch. So, yeah, that does seem pretty interesting. So, even then, no. Again, I'll probably point things out with the other topics and during at some point until tomorrow. And, obviously, as far as what uh, Ray the Flying Squirrel has already mentioned about this briefly, that, unfortunately, though, we got some bad news to tell you guys, especially noticeable if you have a lot of nostalgia memories for the Xbox 360 system. Sadly to tell you is that the Xbox Live Marketplace, you know, with that particular 
iconic uh, shopping, digital shopping thing on the Xbox 360. You can able to download exclusive downloadable games like Sonic Adventure 2 and uh, as well as the forms of Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episodes 1 and 2 and especially noticeable with Sonic CD 20. Uh, 2011 remake, and on top of that were the forms of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Well, it's kind of unfortunate to tell you about the fact that uh, the actual store itself is about to close at some point in 2024, which is next year. Or to be more accurate, it's about to close until the 29th of July in 2024. Jeez, future is gonna be bleak at this point, even without even noticing that Although, it might not be so bad for other games in general, like uh, Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, because at least you can still able to get those games on Xbox One, including Xbox Series X slash S, and as well as the forms of Sonic Adventure, including DLC, and especially no support of Sonic Adventure 2 as well, because obviously those games are backwards compatibility for Xbox One, so at least that's that, including buddy forms of... Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1 and Episode 2, and on top of that with the forms of DuckTales Remastered, but at least for other DLC in mind as well, for the likes of the forms of Sonic Unleashed or something like that, including Sonic Generations for free, and even Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed for I've noticed anyway, but on the other hand, unlike any other games in particular, for the likes of not only Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, but also with Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, it will be unfortunate about the fact that once 2024 rolls around, specifically the 29th of July, it will be unfortunate that you will be no longer going to be able to be getting DLC content for not only for Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing with Banjo-Kazooie, but also with the forms of Sonic 06. So meaning about the fact that you will be no longer going to be getting not only Metal Sonic and Death Egg Track DLC, and also say applies with the uh, extra very hard missions in Sonic 06, and especially noticeable with uh, Team Attack Amigos and Boss Rush or Boss Attack. So, yeah, it's kind of a missed opportunity, whatever they did somehow manage to, like, uh, brought this out for the sake of the forms of that particular update for the Xbox 360 owners. So, yeah, I know, I already said this before, but it looks like the future for the gaming generations just feels a bit bleak right now. So, even then, though, because as a result, I mean, what's next? The forms of that particular uh, PlayStation Network store for the likes of PlayStation 3, even though, luckily, though, that we've already managed to able to address that particular issue. Like, you can, you can still able to actually get some digital games here and there for the PS3 and stuff like that. Assuming, of course, that you have to come across into a stupid lag for that particular input or anything else to be more specific. So, and on top of that, with the forms of uh, PlayStation Vita here and there as well. Although, again, it has it has been a very long while since I, since I actually have last played my PlayStation Vita. Because, obviously, I'm still be busy playing through my Nintendo Switch, the most superior um, handheld console, in my opinion, just because of how successful the Nintendo Switch was to me, so... But either way, though, yeah, it seems kind of sucks to be able to see that, uh, Xbox 360 Marketplace is about to close until next year, so... Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, and I'm very little bit upset about that as well. So, at the very least, luckily, I still managed to be able to get some gem pack for Sonic content on, uh, Oh, and also you can no longer get, um, oh, what should I put it, um, I don't know about you, because I know for a fact I haven't played my Xbox 360 for quite some time, so, maybe I will do eventually if I do some other brief Let's Plays until specifically next year, mind you, but that's saying something, I suppose. So yeah, with that being said, I think we should probably end things off this point right here, so join me next time for more Let's Play of Sonic Frontiers. That's what appears to be about the fact that we still need to be able to grind some more memory tokens, and I think that's going to be the main focus of this part right here, and after that, we'll do some action chain challenges afterwards, so this might take a bit while. So, yeah, I'll see you guys until tomorrow. Later, fellas.